Hey guys and welcome back. Um, so in this video we'll be covering about NumPy and doing some linear algebra. Uh, my linear algebra is a bit rusty but uh, let's see how it goes. Right, so linear algebra operations on arrays. So often um, we want to calculate a linear algebra which involves a lot of matrices and NumPy uh, arrays that handles matrices can be very useful here. So for instance, uh, we have already seen uh, an operation of NumPy arrays, um, namely the transpose uh, method where you invert, uh, well, transform a two-dimensional array, the matrix, uh, into by flipping it uh, around its diagonals, right? So it can also uh, be useful to perform element-wise operations on matrices such as uh, addition or multiplication via scalar. Let's have a look at an example. So one of the um, linear algebra um, operation that we would like to be looking at is the dot product and matrix multiplications. So the dot product, um, also called scalar product, of a two one-dimensional array is calculated by multiplying the first element of the arrays together, second element, and so on. So it's a pairwise multiplications. So if we have an example 357 and 234, then we just multiply element by element. 3 times 2, uh, 5 times 3, 7 times 4, and then we add these together. So in this instance, we should get 49. And this can be uh, done uh, using the dot method of the um, uh, uh, numpy array. So uh, we'll be using this soon, but firstly, array1 equals np.array uh, 3, 5, 7. Okay, and then we're gonna create uh, array2, uh, which contains 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4. Maybe I should save these guys up here. Uh, oh, this will override it, run it. So now we have our uh, array one and array two, oops, array two, okay. And then we can do array one dot dot, and then we provide an input of another numpy array, array two, okay. And gives us 49 as we suspect. So uh, a single dimension, a uh, single dimensional, um, arrays, um, we can apply dot product in this way. Um, very easy to do so, right? So note that this operation is not defined for two arrays of different length. So again, another, if you want to apply an array to an array operation, make sure that their size are the same um, and it will give you an error. So moving on to the matrix multiplication. Um, so the dot product of uh, matrix multiplication uh, if you have done the linear algebra, kind of looks like this. So what you have to do is do the dot product of the rows and columns of two matrices that you're working, and then add it on to uh, the position of where these guys started, right? Um, so first row, first column is first row, first column. Second row, second column is going to be second row, uh, second row, first column is going to be second row, first column of the final product, and so forth, right? So this is how we do the dot product of a matrix uh, in linear algebra. Um, so if it's multiplying uh, n by m by n matrix with an n by p matrix, it will result in m by p matrix. So it, for this one, this is 2 by 3 and 3 by 2. So we will end up with 2 by 2 uh, matrix as a result. Okay, so that's the... Uh, just a simple overview about the dot product of uh, matrix uh, doing the multiplication. And um, this applies the same uh, with multidimensional, uh, well, matrix in uh, numpy arrays. So we can use the uh, dot method as well for singular or uh, two dimensional matrices. Okay, so let's create our two dimensional matrix. I uh, should have written this in here, so let me just quickly. Alright, so we have ready those arrays. So now we're going to run array1 dot and then 
pass in the other array of uh, the, the sizes that you can multiply together. So if we can't multiply these, uh, if the sizes don't, dimensions don't match for this multiplication, then it's going to throw an error. But in this case, uh, it's going to work. So we get the uh, result 12, 18, 8, 15. So you can confirm that um, this multiplied by uh, this. So 6 times 0 plus 3 times 4 plus 1 times 0. So that's 12. So this looks good. And then the second time is 6 plus 3 plus 9. So that's uh, 18. So um, the matrix multiplication using NumPy is looking good, right? So that's how we do uh, matrix multiplication using the dot method um, given by the NumPy, right? Um, but you do have to note that um, matrices in linear algebra can be used to represent linear transformations. And sometimes uh, we wish to find the effect of applying a transform transformations uh, multiple times. So things like matrix exponent uh, falls into this category. So uh, you can do this by uh, performing matrix exponential by multiplying itself uh, multiple times. But you do have to note that if we are using the exponent Python exponent operator, um, then what it's going to do is it's going to apply the scalar operation, right? So that means each element will have this operation performed rather than uh, like this, okay? So that's not what we want here. So let's have a quick look what happens. So we have, what we're going to do is use a square one, okay? So here, a yeah. array one is a square array. And what we can do is array one to the power of two, trying to do a matrix multiplication itself but instead what it's going to do is each element is going to do the power of 2 so 12 squared is 144 8 squared is 64 and so forth so this isn't what we wanted right so instead what we have to do is we need to use a num numpy's linear algebra library so that's uh, numpy dot lin out <laughs> linear algebra that stands for linear algebra and inside the linear algebra library we have matrix power function so that's what we can use instead uh, to do exponent uh, of matrices okay so the um, the structure syntax is quite simple uh, just call the matrix power and then provide the matrix you want to exponent or uh, take the power of and then provide the exponent value. So with our same matrix, I have already imported this at the top. What we can do is instead NP, uh, no, no, matrix power of array one, and then we want to take a square, okay? So this time it gives me a more proper value, which is different to our piecewise operations that we have done up here. So this is expected, so it's going to be 12 times 12 plus 18 times 8. So we will expect a much larger number here than 144. And this operation is applied uh, similarly for all the other slots. Okay, so this way we can do the matrix power uh, using this function. So do note that you cannot use the Python power to uh, do the matrix exponentiation. Oh, backwards. Okay. Um, note that the exponent can only be performed for square matrices, as you would have imagined, because otherwise the the sizes don't match for multiplying matrices together. Um, yeah. All right. So next item we might be interested in uh, in linear algebra is matrix inverse. So sometimes we need to find an inverse matrix so that when you multiply it together, it gives us the I matrix. So the, it, that's the ones across the diagonals and the rest of the numbers are zero. 
So we can always calculate a matrix inverse using NumPy. So let's see how we can do this. All right. Uh, but do note that not every matrix has an inverse. But if it does, the matrix is, uh, well, we can find those invertible matrices using NumPy. Okay. So let's uh, have a look at that. To calculate the matrix uh, inverse, we can use our matrix power um, function provided where our the exponent value you pass in as negative one. So as you can imagine, that's going to be our inverse, right? So that if it's negative one, it's going to be one over whatever the value you have. And in this context, it will provide us uh, the inverse um, matrix. How handy, right? So we can do something like a inverse equals um, matrix power uh, of array one, but negative one. So now we look at a inverse inside, then this contains our inverse matrix. So you can see those numbers that are provided some you know, values, but essentially what we get is if we multiply a inverse and array one together, um, then it's going to give us an I matrix. So we can do uh, array one dot dot uh, a inverse. Uh, then this should give us an I matrix. So here we have one, zero, one, and this one is to the power of negative 16. So it's a really, really small value. However, again, the float point precision in Python isn't very good. So uh, you have to work with that. Um, but essentially, this gives us a, a very, very small number. You can treat it as zero. If you round it up to say, for example, four decimal places, this will disseminate into zero value. Okay. Um, but uh, the NumPy library has dedicated inverse functions. So what we can do is rather than using uh, the power one, we can call the inverse uh, function uh, associated. So I have already imported this um, up there, so I can use that. So a inverse, let's name it two, equals inverse. Oh, did I not import it? Uh, let's do that then. Uh, from numpy dot uh, lin algebra import in that's what we want so now we have imported it so a inverse 2 equals inverse of ra1 then this should give us the same result as what we see up here so a inverse 2 is uh yep that one is same as that one that one is same as that one and so forth so this gives us the same um, value so we if we do do the dot product of array one and this inverse as well this is going to give us an i okay but as mentioned before not all matrices will have the inverse uh, as well and if we do try to find an inverse of the matrix that doesn't have the inverse then it's going to give us an error okay so uh, we call these uh, matrices sometimes singular or ill-conditioned matrices um, and what we want to do is check that the matrix will likely to have an inverse before we try the inverse function. And this can be done by using the NumPy's um, the condition uh, method provided through the linear algebra library. Okay. So what we can do is provide a matrix A into the condition function, and this is going to give us a, a sensitive value. Um, and we can kind of estimate uh, whether this matrix will have an inverse or not. So because if this value is closer to the one, then it, it is likely to have an inverse. But if it tends towards infinity, then it's unlikely to have an inverse. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't give us an exact uh, result um, before it try. So Possibly uh, you can set some threshold values to catch it, or you can use the exception handling uh, to make sure that if you do get an error, you can capture that. So here's an example. Have I imported LA? Yes, I have. So LA has been imported um, as a linear algebra, and linear algebra has the condition function. So LA dot cond uh, array one, and we see that 
Array one for this particular one, uh, the value is a 6.4. So that's the this guy here. Uh, this one is a slightly different array, so you will have, expect different values. So, but what we can see here is some small positive value tends towards um, one. So this way we can find that this one will likely have an inverse. Okay. So if we do calculate an inverse, it will provide the inverse for us. Okay. However, in this instance, array two. So let's create that array. Uh, array. Oops. Array two equals np dot array. Square bracket one zero 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 one zero one zero zero. Okay, and if run this again, so la dot uh, no not in this uh, cond right array two. And this one says it's an infinity. So typically, an infinity infinity value is denoted as um, just characters i and f because it tends towards infinity. So if we do try to find the inverse of this guy, um, uh, la dot la dot inverse of array two, then this is going to give us an error. This is a singular matrix. Uh, basically. Um, Failed to find an inverse, and it, you, you see the linear algebra where it raised the error as well. Okay, so these are some of the useful ways of um, doing some linear algebras. In this video, we covered about the dot product for singular arrays as well as the two dimensional one, and we covered matrix exponents and finding the inverse. So, hopefully, those are useful. Otherwise, uh, we will slowly move on to our symbolic computation in the next video. But I'll see you there. Bye-bye.